Welcome everyone. My name is Dr. Michael Novick. I am the Director of Education and Associate Director of Quality Assurance for VRAD. This is our first QA forum of 2021, and as always, we will break each forum up into four 15-minute bite-sized segments for easy consumption. In this first segment, we will cover acute osteomyelitis, which we see quite a bit of in our practice. These studies can be very challenging to read, even for MSK radiologists, and especially when they involve the feet. Before we get going, just a little bit of bookkeeping. Here is our accreditation statement and the learning objectives for this lecture. Before we begin, just a brief word about nomenclature, because I do frequently see the MRI sequences mislabeled by the text. This top sequence here is an axial sequence, and you can orient yourself by imagining the MRI scanner slicing through the lower leg in the axial plane and continuing through the ankle and the foot in the neutral position. Likewise, the bottom sequence is a coronal sequence, and again, you can orient yourself by imagining the MRI scanner slicing through the lower leg in the coronal plane and continuing through the ankle and foot in the neutral position. Of course, you can avoid confusion altogether by simply referencing series numbers in your reports for pertinent images. With that, let's move on to some cases. Our first patient is a 48-year-old woman who arrives with a history of rule-out osteomyelitis. And I thought I would use this first case to give you an example of my search pattern and show you which sequences I find useful for particular findings. I tend to start with the axial and occasionally the sagittal non-fat suppressed T1 weighted sequence to get an overall picture of the bony findings. In this case, I can clearly see there have been amputations at the level of the second and third metatarsal shafts. And there is also a chronic appearing well-circumscribed erosion along the medial aspect of the hallux metatarsal head, as well as some subtle but confluent T1 hypointensity in the hallux distal phalanx with what looks like a small adjacent erosion by the head. This is going to be our area of interest. Moving on to the axial fluid sensitive sequences, we can quickly rule out any acute pathology in the region of the hallux metatarsal head as there's no bone marrow edema associated with the chronic erosion we saw on the T1 weighted sequence. There is diffuse soft tissue swelling and subcutaneous edema. And of course, what stands out as we scroll through is the prominent bone marrow edema in the hallux distal phalanx, which corresponds to the subtle T1 hypointensity we saw on the T1 weighted sequence. These are the coronal fluid sensitive images. And again, we're gonna scrutinize that great toe as we get there, but we're just gonna do a quick look now and we can see all the soft tissue inflammation in the musculature and the overlying subcutaneous tissues. There's actually a defect here at the operative site along the dorsum of the foot. So your eye is drawn to that area. There's some phlegmonous change there, but nothing organized. And of course, you're gonna now wanna scrutinize the underlying operative site there, the metatarsal shafts. They look clean. There's no evidence of osteomyelitis there. And as we come back down to the area of interest along the great toe, we'll again see the prominent bone marrow edema in the distal phalanx. And on this sequence, you can clearly see the ulceration along the plantar surface of the great toe. So this is definitely our area of interest. We have osteomyelitis with an overlying soft tissue ulceration, and that's basically the ball game in this case. Just reviewing our findings, here again is the coronal fluid sensitive sequence and the deep soft tissue ulceration we saw when we scrolled through these images. I try to be as descriptive as possible in my reports, although the referring clinicians will be able to examine the patient and see exactly where this ulceration is. Here's a screenshot from the axial fluid sensitive sequence. Really demonstrates the prominent bone marrow edema. Probably the most important sequence when we're talking about acute osteomyelitis is going to be the non-fat suppressed T1 weighted sequence. Here is an image from the axial series, which demonstrates our confluent T1 hypointensity, which seals the diagnosis of acute osteomyelitis.
I try to be as succinct as possible in my impressions, so for this case I would simply say acute osteomyelitis of the hallux distal phalanx with associated soft tissue infection. Our next case is a 47-year-old woman with cellulitis. Once again, I like to begin with the axial non-fat suppressed T1 weighted sequence to get an idea of the osseous architecture. There are some mild degenerative changes here, but nothing really stands out. No erosions or areas of marrow edema. I do see a little soft tissue ulceration abutting the hallux distal phalanx, which I'll take a closer look at on the other sequences. Moving on to the axial fluid sensitive sequence, I notice diffuse soft tissue swelling and subcutaneous edema, and my attention is again drawn to the hallux distal phalanx where there is bone marrow edema on this sequence. We were fortunate enough in this case to have post contrast images, which are always useful, and I think as we peruse these, you'll notice some subtle bone marrow edema in the hallux distal phalanx. You can also use these images to look for abscess collections and soft tissue masses. Reviewing our findings, here is an image from the axial fluid sensitive sequence, demonstrating increased signal in the hallux distal phalanx. Anytime you see bone marrow edema on the fluid sensitive sequence, especially if there's an adjacent soft tissue finding, you'll want to scrutinize the non fat suppressed T1 weighted sequences for the T1 hypo intensity that is the hallmark of acute osteomyelitis. As you can see, there is no corresponding T1 hypo intensity in this case. We do, however, have some subtle enhancement in that area on the post-contrast sequences, which you can see with reactive osteitis. So the diagnosis in this case is reactive bone marrow edema without MR evidence of acute osteomyelitis. One note I'd like to make, when I do see uh, bone marrow edema with an overlying soft tissue ulceration, especially when there's also enhancement on the post-contrast sequences, I will generally make a statement in my impression along the lines of continued clinical and imaging surveillance is recommended. If there's no clinical intervention, this patient likely will develop osteomyelitis in the near future. Our third case is a 64-year-old woman with severe foot pain for rule-out osteomyelitis. You'll notice a pattern here. We frequently do not receive any localizing information from the referring clinicians. So it's our job to try to suss out where the area of interest is based on our search pattern. In this case, I wanted to start out by showing you the sagittal fluid sensitive sequence because I think the finding is most obvious on these images. And I think you'll all be able to see as we scroll through the area that stands out is the third distal phalanx, which demonstrates marked bone marrow edema and an adjacent soft tissue ulceration. Moving on to the sagittal T1 weighted sequence, recall that if we see T1 hypo intensity here, we already have a diagnosis of acute osteomyelitis. And as we scroll through the images, I think you'll appreciate that we do, in fact, have the associated T1 hypo intensity and even some erosive or destructive change in the distal phalangeal head and shaft. You'll see other findings. There's some pretty advanced degenerative change here at the hallux metatarsophalangeal joint, which we'll comment on in the findings section of our report. I did want to show you one more sequence in this case. These are the axial fluid sensitive images. And I wanted to do this to demonstrate the importance of using all of the provided sequences. Here on these axial images, the finding is almost invisible. Reviewing the pertinent image from the fluid sensitive sequence, we can clearly see the soft tissue erosion abutting the head of the third distal phalanx. conspicuous associated bone marrow edema, and erosive or destructive change in the head of the distal phalanx.
Returning to our sagittal T1 weighted sequence, we can see the erosive destructive change in the distal phalangeal head and the adjacent soft tissue findings. It's very useful if you have plain radiographs. Sometimes these findings are equivocal on the MRI. It's very easy to see the associated erosive changes on those images. Once again, the money shot in these cases, here is the associated T1 hypo intensity that is diagnostic of acute osteomyelitis. Our next case is a 42-year-old man with the very specific history of foot pain. We'll begin again with the axial T1 weighted sequence to evaluate the osseous structures. I hope your attention is drawn, as mine is, to the hallux interphalangeal joint and the phalanges. There's clearly erosive change there, pronounced T1 hypointensity, soft tissue findings. Reviewing the corresponding fluid sensitive images, I think you can all appreciate the pronounced bone marrow edema in the hallux phalanges, the periarticular erosive or destructive changes, the overlying soft tissue ulcerations with confluent fluid extending into and around the joint space. This is just a mess of an interphalangeal joint. Here on the sagittal sequence, we can clearly see the fluid and synovitis in the joint space, the overlying soft tissue ulcerations and loculated fluid, the pronounced periarticular marrow changes. These are all hallmarks of septic arthritis and acute osteomyelitis. Once again, reviewing our findings, we have pronounced periarticular bone marrow edema. a large dorsal soft tissue ulceration with loculated fluid and phlegmonish change extending directly into the joint space. And on the sagittal T1 weighted images, profound T1 hypointensity in the hallux phalanges. And our diagnosis is septic arthritis of the hallux interphalangeal joint with associated periarticular osteomyelitis. I wanted to shift gears a little bit for this last case, so we'll be looking at some CT images. This is a 43-year-old man with frostbite. These are the axial soft tissue window images. And as we scroll through, I think you'll appreciate there is some pronounced soft tissue swelling and subcutaneous edema. And I hope the soft tissue gas stands out as we scroll through both feet. This is obviously an important finding. It could be related to overlying soft tissue ulcerations, but in this case, we're certainly going to be worried about necrotizing fasciitis. And now scrolling through the bone windows, I think you'll all appreciate that what we're looking for with CT images or plain radiographs are erosive changes. Very difficult here because there's such a large field of view. Pay close attention to the bones as we scroll through here. Again, you can see the soft tissue gas and the soft tissue swelling even with the bone windows on, but as I said, pay attention to the osseous structures as we move through here. These are coronal images with bone windows on again. They're a little bit more coned down, so you'll get a better view of the osseous structures. So what are the important findings in this case? I think it was fairly easy for all of us to appreciate the soft tissue gas and subcutaneous emphysema. But the most important finding in this case was much more subtle, particularly given the large field of view. On this image, I think you can all see the intraosseous gas, which is a hallmark of emphysematous osteomyelitis or osteonecrosis. Reviewing the case from another angle, again, the soft tissue gas is fairly easy to appreciate. 
The intraosseous gas is much more subtle, but also hugely important with respect to patient care and outcome. And again, our diagnosis is emphysematous osteomyelitis. Have a look at this journal article if you like. I did use it for some portions of this talk and reviewed it for Journal Club recently. Um, I hope that this talk has helped you overcome some of your distaste for these studies. I know that when you first open a foot case, they can be very intimidating, but if you stick to your search pattern and have an approach for each of these cases, I think you can really take the mystery out of them. Thank you all for attending.